I think it's generally a good idea to draft wing-sized guys who are pretty solid at everything and can reliably shoot off the dribble or shoot really at all. This is kind of feels like common knowledge to some, but I think there is worth digging deeper into the value of these well-rounded wings with the pull-up shot-making competency um, and obviously who I think is going to fit this year, um, which you already know because it's in the title. But guys like Torian Prince, who... I don't know, kind of unremarkable, but could shoot off of the dribble. Prince in particular wasn't a great handler, but he ended up carving out, you know, a good career for, I think he got picked a little high in like the teens, but in like the 20s, the, a Torian Prince type career is something that you can live with as a guy who can functionally play on offense, has, you know, real skills. He wasn't like the greatest player ever. I um, mean, he definitely struggled at times, but he could separate for jumpers. And some of the, the on-ball shooting flashes were, honestly really nice he could do a good amount and there was a little bit of passing flashes not a ton but i like this read here kind of audibly low but prince was a guy and we'll, we'll get into the numbers soon just could do a little bit of everything as i was saying before except for dribbling prince notably could not dribble which i think was one of his damning issues and kind of always has been dylan brooks is another guy like this who i mean this is like his thing in the league he's obviously a much more explosive like just like a you know mid-range shot creator combo score type he, he, he had some crazy, like, burst moments and explosion and stuff in college, but so much of Dylan's game, I would just, like, using his size to, to get to the mid-range, get to his spots, pull up, create in a different amount of ways. Maybe not elite at any one, like, creation trait, but has size, can really do stuff. Who else? I totally... I, I think I remember watching this game. Or maybe I don't, but... Just these guys who were, didn't have any glaring weaknesses, but were generally very useful players and, and scorers, and, I mean, obviously very dynamic scorers in college. Even a guy like Rodney Hood, I kind of think of, who could hit little pull-ups off of the dribble and was a good shooter overall, had a little bit of driving juice, flashed some, some you know, basic passes, seemed competent enough on defense, really loved him spinning into all of his jumpers there. And I think if we just look at the statistical history of these, like, wing size guys who shoot enough threes and <clears throat> shoot mid-range jumpers. It's like a pretty good hit rate. Obviously, you have your star level guys like Cade and Ingram and Keegan Murray and Clay and Vassell and all of these guys. But a lot of these guys, even like, you know, Moody, Will, um, Hood, Hardaway Jr., Bullock, Shepard Will, Groves, Vasquez, Alan Crabb, Joe Harris. Like, these are guys who stick in the league. Josh Richardson, Dylan Brooks, as we saw. Maybe not someone who is like super exciting, Bates Diop stuck in the league, but these are guys who get second contracts, and something that that's something that's really valuable. And right, it, it's these guys who are volumous shooters and have like the that mid range ability. And I think specifically in terms of a lot of these different players down here is where I think Jalen Tyson of Cal fits in. Finally, revealing the the, the guy who you all know um, that I'm talking about, but I want to look at his stats for a second as well because i think they're really interesting and something i noticed about tyson um is that he isn't really bad at any statistical category except for like three point attempt rate which is a little low but overall the shooting numbers are good like competent in terms of assist turnover steal block free throw turnover a great assist and usage numbers like he's competent everywhere and obviously impactful in line with guys like prince and dylan brooks and stuff like that and i think Tyson is as talented as any of these guys. He is a ridiculously, we're going to go over what makes him good on offense, crazy explosive pull-up shooter. And that's really one of the main things. Tall wing pull-up shooters, as we've been talking about, very valuable. Tyson can get into his own shot off the dribble. He has a really nice handle and he can create space with it, lull defenders to sleep, shoot over mismatches, was comfortable using multiple moves like this is a beautiful jumper right here tyson going over the screen cross quick cross and like he very smoothly flows from his dribble into his pull up over the top of his head it's just a very dynamic pull up shot maker in all spots of the floors and that's a very valuable thing not just being an off ball shooter but someone who can create for themselves in the mid-range and can do a bunch of different things and then he is an overwhelming driver like he has this level of shooting, but he's also strong and has this kind of straight up first step burst. This is just a foot race. Tyson versus the defender, empty side. Obviously he has the like the leverage advantage, but gets a little step with his leverage and his first step and then is able to pull away. 
and finish strong. He has, he, he's a creative finisher. This like lefty offhand inside scoop is really nice. That's something he'll do. Use like the inside hand in the rim. But yeah, he can really get by guys. And he's explosive as you can see. Easy win with burst and separating late with his explosion. Hanging in the air, staying balanced is so impressive here. The ability to not fall over when getting smacked like that. That is impressive. Um, that is extremely impressive. And he just has some really overwhelming advantage creation moments. And this kind of advantage creation makes me think he has the upside to be more than just one of these wingy role players because it's not just the, the shooting as we talked about. He wins easy in many different ways. Quick, like I, I love this pickup. Super great counter to like the reach and creative footwork exploding off of one foot. Like he's a dynamic athlete. He's really skilled. There's just so much to like about Tyson as a scorer. And if you can get buckets, there really is a floor for you in the league, right? Like that, that just matters. Like give me a guy who's going to shoot, who's, you know, who's going to space the floor, who can score a little bit for himself and is going to be playable on defense. Like those are guys like, you know, like Tory Tory and Prince types who get paid and stay in the league. Um, but print, but Tyson, I think again, really nice burst here again, just totally accelerating past Cody Williams, and you can always see the strength from him on his drives, holding defenders off, maintaining his angle and his positioning. He's an extremely talented driver, um, but there is some weirdness in this game, and I think these clips are actually out of order. But the thing with Tyson, that's you know, he's so talented as you can see, maybe like lottery plus flashes, but. His, he's just very inconsistent, and that combined with his age is, is, is worrying. Where He'll just make some strange decisions that make me kind of question his overall feel, where I do like his, his ambition as a passer generally. These clips are out of whack, but we'll just kind of review them in a random order. Tyson is an ambitious passer. I really like his willingness to try this play. The, the accuracy isn't great, but that's a, you know, if you can spin that in there, that's a, that's a dunk, so... I do like that ambitiousness, but he, again, very willing to take risks for better or worse, but he makes a lot of these weird decisions where he's like pump faking in air and, you know, not throwing a pass where he should, or he's like very easily fooled by the, the Dante stunt. So he pass fakes, Dante doesn't bite at all. Um, and then he still tries to like lob it over when it would fall like Dante. Obviously Dante is an enormous human being who's going to be a decent rotation big, but Tyson just makes a lot of these weird decisions where it's like, I'm not sure exactly what the plan is supposed to be. Um, and there are a lot of players who are like this, especially as young players who play more on like instinct than really reading the floor out and like processing. They're just like, oh, I like my basketball instinct is right most of the time. So I'm just going to trust it. And I think it's fairly common. And a lot of guys develop into much better passers when they're like that early. But Tyson does have some like structured read stuff where this is a simple like pistol action here empty side where Tyson is just reading this health defender and he uses some manipulation here a little bit looks like looks like yeah Tyson's eyes are moving or not at least not directly on the roller and when he passes it he passes over the top there's not a clear advantage this tagger is still there but he's reading momentum he's reading the taggers movement back to the corner and he slips it and that's a really nice structured read right he's using manipulation timing within the timing and the structure of an offense and he has a little bit of creativity out of the pick and roll where rejecting the screen, snaking back to the right, bouncing like to, to exploit this ball watching. He, he, again, just like the scoring, the flashes are extremely high level, but then like he'll do stuff where I see him snake and then he snakes for kind of no reason. The, the decision-making is just kind of weird. And I think the main concern for me for that is how does he scale down into a smaller role? Because Tyson is probably not going to ever have 30 usage again unless he hits like a star-level outcome, which I guess is possible. So this decision-making stuff becomes more important in these smaller roles where you have to like maximize your touches. And on a play like this where Tyson seems like if he just explodes middle, he'll probably have at least a foul here, but snakes back to like a closed side and then just kind of loses the ball. There are a lot of these plays. And then you get beautiful plays like this, though, where I'm like, okay, so maybe he, this is where, like, again, just, like, the basketball instinct. Pump faking, totally fooling his defender. Beautiful touch with the left hand. Like, his touch is really awesome, and that lefty floater is beautiful. So, again, it's the consistency. It's the flashes. It's how do you balance that, where Tyson's strong as hell, and he can get to the rim using his body, where, again... Tyson, yeah, this is maybe a push off, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pro basketball, but always gets guys off, is able to hang in the air 
and finished. The the finishing, I think, is going to be really solid. Even though the numbers aren't, like, incredible, I think they're kind of skewed by the usage, um, the usage and, like, the how much he carries load-wise. But I think he has the, the tools to be a really effective finisher. And then one of these weird, like, pump fakey type decisions where Tyson tries to, like... I feel like he kind of maybe predetermined this because it seems like in all of his like pass fake and then do something with the same kind of timing and rhythm there. But no one really bites on the fake. And then like, I, again, I respect this attempt. I think it showcase like, I think it showcases some vision and creativity to be able to even see that this is possible. Maybe it's just naive to think that this is a good play for anyone, but like Luca and Trey or something. But I do think he has like some real vision and creativity and some like high level passing traits, but a lot of low level passing traits as well. Another good read within structure, right? He's just running, they're running Spain, Arizona doesn't cover it on the back, easy decision, pass over top. It's a great read, point guard stuff. The inconsistency is just weird. Like the, again, and I struggle with parsing the decision making. And I, I, I definitely put this backwards because I meant to have this first because this fucking pass. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's filthy. And, and again, it's just like the, the, the kind of instinct reads where Tyson gets cut off on his drive. He can't score. He's like pumping, pumping, draws the help in immediately, just drops it down. Accuracy, timing, not perfect. And he is definitely reading more here. But this is the kind of like high-level enticing passing that Tyson's bringing. And he's like an okay defender. I think he's... A lot of his issues just come with like effort and focus, but he is a little bit clunky as a mover too. I think, even though he's like strong and pretty quick laterally, um, he was definitely better on defense to my, to my recollection at Texas Tech last year when he wasn't as much of an offensive res like responsibility. But he can really move, and he flashes some pretty high level on ball defense stuff, sliding and using his explosion to get off the ground and his his stock numbers have definitely gone down and there are flashes of def defending the ball even though this shot is going to go in i think tyson generally does a really good job here getting over the screening and testing so there's definitely defensive upside I, I think i think that's clear and tyson though not a perfect prospect i think is should be like a lock top 25 pick to me at least i think i understand the case for having him higher than that the the flashes and like the pull-up shooting plus advantage creation plus passing is just really enticing. But I do worry about an older guy with his level of, you know, consistency, decision-making issues, and I want to see more on defense. But overall, I, I love Tyson. He's one of my favorite players in this class to watch. He's electric overall, and I think he could legitimately be one of those guys who, like, is a useful playoff player just because of his scoring, because he can get buckets. I honestly think, like, he's a sneaky, like, P.J. Washington award type, where P.J. was just always a bucket getter. Um, and obviously his, his role in the NBA looks so much different than it looked in college. And that'll be the same for Tyson, but he just gets buckets and he's big enough and has size. So draft him.